What I believe today is that change never takes place from the top down. All right, so today I wanted to get into uh, this clip of uh, Richard Wolf, as well as a clip from uh, the Tom Hartman show in regards to taxes. But uh, specifically, first I want to focus in on this clip of uh, Richard Wolf where he's going into the importance of holding the ruling class accountable, especially within the context of the pandemic, especially if you take into consideration how other countries have dealt with the issue, such as reoccurring payments of 2K, if not 1K, 2K, such as what we have here in Canada, and certain countries have even resorted to covering wages of workers even up to the 80 percentile therefore what's the issue with america how come there's only been one specific payment of twelve hundred dollars while these other countries are nowhere near as wealthy and this is where we find out from richard wolf's analysis of the importance of holding the ruling class accountable. And holding the ruling class accountable corresponds instability within the economy. Furthermore, he goes into explaining how FDR going against the ruling class and holding them accountable in regards to taxation highlights the importance and or emphasizes the need to hold the ruling class accountable because it sustains capitalism. It sustains capitalism from not moving over into a oligarchy and or plutocracy therefore maintaining the stability of the economy here's the clip and the immediate greed of the big businesses their need not to pay even a little bit of taxes you know when roosevelt went to the businesses in the 30s he said you better give me tax money to do for the mass of people what they need, because if you don't, you won't have any wealth when this is over. So part with some of it to keep the rest of it. What's happening now is they don't think they have to, so they're not doing it. And this is going to, in the end, undercut them themselves. You know, I don't like to quote Karl Marx, but he did say 150 years ago, that capitalism is full of these kinds of internal contradictions that will, in the end, knock it out of the box. All right, so there we have uh, Richard Wolff uh, going into the importance of holding the ruling class accountable and or highlighting FDR or FDR's presidency within the context of the 1930s all the way up until the late 1940s. And moreover, he talks about, in a sort of superficial manner, that capitalism prevents it from essentially from being knocked out of the box. It's a very superficial analysis that he puts forward in that sense. But what he's essentially saying is that a regulated version of capitalism corresponds in stability as opposed to a thoroughly deregulated and privatized perspective in regards to the role of government, which is now what we've had since the 1980s. Because it's important to note that FDR era of politics that gave us Social Security, let alone the New Deal, such as the Tennessee Valley Authority, and so on and so forth in terms of federal jobs, and or social programs, be it social security. Then, of course, we had Truman, who went to such an extent 
of trying to get a universal health care system passed, but was unable to do so because he didn't have the support in Congress. So we're seeing a central left position from Democrats on a domestic level. Then, of course, with Kennedy, he further tried to expand the role of government in terms of expanding the New Deal legacy, but of course he got assassinated. And then with LBJ, we had the Great Society programs, which of course gave us Medicare, Medicaid, expansion of Social Security, let alone the expansion of public education. But that era of Democrats being center-left came to an end, largely nearing the end of Jimmy Carter's presidency in the late 1970s. And then, of course, we went into the era of Reagan politics, which is an era of deregulation and privatization, which often corresponds in cuts to those very social programs that were created within that sort of 1930s all the way up until the late 1970s era. And those programs, of course, being Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security, let alone any further expansion of such said programs. But uh, here, there's obviously a natural question that arises. Well, how do you go about doing such an act of holding the ruling class accountable and this is of course where taxation comes into play and I want to highlight uh, FDR's analysis on taxation courtesy of uh, the Tom Hartman show so here's the clip taxes after all are the dues that we pay for the privilege of membership in an organized society and as society becomes more civilized government national and state and local is called on to assume more obligations to its citizens. The privileges of membership in a civilized society have vastly increased in modern times. But I am afraid we have many who still do not recognize their advantages and want to avoid paying their dues. On the one hand, there has been a vast majority of citizens who believe that the benefits of democracy should be extended and who are willing to pay their fair share to extend them. And on the other hand, there has been a small but powerful group which has fought the extension of these benefits because it did not want to pay a fair share of their cost. So I really like that part in the end where FDR says, and I'm paraphrasing that the extension of the government is vital because there's a certain class, i.e. the ruling class, that did not want to pay their fair share. Hence the reason why stability in the economy is preserved and or maintained when individuals are held democratically accountable in conjunction with banks and markets regulated in light and or interest of the public good. Of course, we talked about that was the era that persisted on a domestic level when Democrats were central left, 1930s all the way up until the late 1970s. That era is framed by academics as being the era of reform liberalism right because of course you're going from classical liberalism all the way up until the 1930s then we're getting reform liberalism because now freedom is being redefined by the role of the government so instead of a hands off approach it's a hands on approach no reg laissez faire economic system Keynesian system, of course now, 1980s and onwards, deregulation and privatization is the norm, which leans more towards a Friedrich Hayek system of economic analysis.
So there we have Richard Wolf, as well as uh, FDR, courtesy of the Tom Hartman Show, highlighting the importance of holding the ruling class accountable, especially within the context of the pandemic, especially within the context of how America has dealt with this issue, especially in comparison to other countries. Thank you.